All right, everyone, we start off today talking about inflation. We finally have last month's numbers, and they're not good, but they were less ungood than they were supposed to be by a small margin. This, uh, because Biden is so bad at economics, the fact that it was marginally less shitty than, than it could have been actually has Wall Street stocks going higher, like confidence inched up. Uh, th this is surreal. Link in the description archived, of course. Inflation at 5.4% for July, but it was supposed to be slightly higher. So people are like, hey, inflation has peaked. Yay, it'll go back down now. Well, maybe not. It could level out for some time, and you've got to understand any actual inflation above and beyond economic growth, and it's considerably above and beyond that, uh, rebound aside, uh, is, is depreciating the value of every holding that anyone has. If a person has money in the bank, person has something of numismatic value of any sort, uh, if, if wages rise but then on, on inflation rises significantly, the purchasing power of the new wages is lower uh, even in, than the old wages. I loved it when they had that fluff piece. Oh, the silver lining to inflation is higher wages. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, you've got more money. It still purchases less. So what's the fucking point? That's not a silver lining. That's called deluding yourself. First and foremost, though, if you're watching this video on YouTube, keep in mind there will be a pinned comment down below with links to four other video hosting sites that I use. I make two videos a day that are exclusive to other platforms now, partially because of content, partially because of verboten opinions, and partially simply because I want to incentivize people to use those platforms. Uh, considering that YouTube is now banning U.S. senators for significant periods of time for talking about magical paper cloth on people's face uh, the wrong way, the writing's kind of on the wall now, isn't it, as far as socio-political discourse on YouTube as a platform. But inflation is still high. 5.4%, okay. It's only at a 17-year high still. That's okay. It could have been worse. It could have gone up further beyond the last month. That's true. It's true the core inflation actually lowered by oh, was it, 0.2, I believe. That's good. Well, that's not terrible news. That's down at least. That, that's the metric of the actual depreciation uh, of value over time. But it's still excessive, number one. Inflation month over month is still high, number two. The economy is not recovering the way that it was months ago, number three. Uh, Biden is terrible for consumer and business confidence and is planning on more inflation, by the way, number four. The problem is that if he gets his full... Uh, omnibus 3.5 trillion pork barrel infrastructure deal done if it's not cut down further uh, in budget reconciliation going back and forth between Manchin and Cinema and AOC and Bernie on the other side mainly if that doesn't happen and, and even if a slim down bill is passed you'll have another round of inflation and that's not the only end-all be-all of spending that the government uh, seeks to embark on you have elements of the new green deal which basically have been watered down into another version of Shovel Ready, uh, basically Solyndron Steroids 2.0, don't you think that might harm the value of the currency? Because it's not being paid for, by the way, by taxes. Not at this point. The, the tax code hasn't been changed in any meaningful sense. The, in fact, the only uh, uh, meaningful reform that Biden really has embarked on, if you look at the actual tax code, is the restoration of the limitless uh, offset for SALT deductions for people who are rich, who are living in high tax states. This will lower the amount of tax money taken in. I, I love it because, <laughs> essentially, you're giving freebies to billionaires while proposing trillions in new spending, none of which is going to bring a return. Much of it doesn't even deal with infrastructure. I found it funny, though. The funniest part of this is... is when businesses in the financial sector look at Biden and they look because he's, you know, the buck stops here, he's not 100 percent in control even of his own bowels at this point, but he's the figurehead, he's the steward that is related to economic growth or, or shrinkage. When they determine that 5.4 percent inflation is a breath of fresh air and a real big relief and they start investing more because of that, my goodness, what a stunning unendorsement of his economic capabilities. And this has been going on since the moment the asterisk administration uh, first took place. We have had higher than expected, considerably higher than normal inflation then for four months in a row. Now a fifth month, you have inflation. It's slightly below expected, but that's only because they kept raising their expectations based on previous numbers and they overshot the mark. 
5.4% inflation should not be considered to be a good thing. That should not become as a relief to people. A normal, functional, healthy economy doesn't cause you to say, oh, it was, inflation was 5.4%. Phew. Ah, we really dodged a bullet there. <laughs> That's not, this is Jimmy Carter uh, uh, levels. You also still have high unemployment. The unemployment that was being uh, reabsorbed, especially under the last few months of Trump's presidency, when the real rebound happened in, in Trump's few last months, um, it was funny because people were very honest about it, saying, the legacy media mainly, uh, this isn't really new jobs. This is just the jobs that were on furlough and stuff because of coronatarianism uh, coming back online. That is true. And by the way, I pointed that out at the time. It's not technically economic growth. It's a recovery from an artificial recession. Biden, meanwhile, virtually every day on Twitter is like, well, Build Back Better is working. We've got record job growth, which is a lie. That's not even true. Now, we've got uh, unemployment keeps going down, but, but it doesn't. You look at the jobs report for the last couple of months, unemployment uh, at first, uh, uh, jobs numbers came in well below, uh, expected by the way in both months. Uh, in the second month, in June, unemployment went up by 0.3. So what are you talking about? It's not key, it didn't even keep pace with the population growth. <laughs> That's not a healthy economy. Um, we, we were on track, and the fact is that Beijing Biden doesn't know how to handle economics, and he surrounded himself, and this is the problem, because he's not making the decisions in and of himself. He's not even really a president. He's a steward. The problem is he surrounded himself by inept cronies like Booty Judge who also don't know anything about economics. He's more likely to listen to a hack like Paul Krugman than he is to someone who actually understands the basic premise of money and how it works. But this shouldn't come as any real big surprise of Biden the other day. He's returning from the White House from an extended Delaware vacation. He has to take vacations frequently for his rest and relaxation because sometimes his dementia really acts up and they can't have him in public too much. He calls a bunch of lid days on the media, goes and basically hides from the public for almost a week, comes back to the White House they're like staggering around, ignoring his own secret service. He's obviously haggard and demented. Um, it shouldn't surprise us that it, any decision he makes would be a poor decision. They probably don't even let him have the nuclear football near him. It was very, very telling that that wasn't the case, actually, uh, when he arrived back at the White House. That'll be another video today because it's so funny. When 5.4% uh, when inflation, my goodness. Uh, if this had happened, if you'd had 5.4, uh, let's say in 2017 or something, Trump comes on the set and all of a sudden you have a spike in inflation like this, people would be calling for his head. Oh my God, the Don, see, the Don doesn't know how to handle money. No, this, this, we knew this because he went bankrupt a couple times on uh, Atlantic City casinos and stuff. So he's bad with money, ha ha ha. It would have been a joke and it would have been a political problem. With Biden, they breathe a sigh of relief. He fucked up, but he didn't fuck up as much as we expected him to. Thank goodness, let's reinvest. That's about all. Peace out.